is called to order a uh, meeting of the planning board and we'll begin with um, where we usually begin with public comment if anybody has something they wish to bring to the board's attention that isn't on the agenda now is the time to do that and if you're going to speak please come there where the microphone is that's what connects us to FCTV at home and when you speak please say your name and what you're going to speak on first so public comment anyone no in that case we can get going Paul minutes yeah, Madam Chair, I recommend approval of the minutes of November 13, 2023 and November 28, 2023 as corrected. Any Second. comment? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's passed. Jim, did you want to make a comment on minutes? <coughs> yes. Just to, I don't remember which one of it was, but it was on that, and this is the only way I could get on the agenda. I just wanted to bring up that we had a vote for the, is it the, with the Mike Glasso's project on Main Street and our 545. 545, I couldn't remember the address. And our planning board, I just wanted to, our record shows the planning board voted unanimously in favor of that project. And I would just like to tell the board that I am planning to go to the zoning board meeting and just, just if the only thing I need to bring is the minutes, the notes, and the only thing I'm going to talk about is that we unanimously approved that, that project. Thank you for doing that. Okay. Yeah, that'll be good. I just th thought the project needed some reinforcement, and since we all voted for it, I didn't think you mind, and I'll be careful not to say that I speak the whole board, but that we did vote, and you're, I'll, I'll just tell them how you voted, and that's it. That's all I'm going to say. When's that meeting? It's coming up this Thursday. 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 And that's it. That's all I wanted to make that's sure it. I had the right to do that. Thank you. You do. Please go and do it. So first on our agenda uh, tonight, we've got two approval not requires, two A and R's. And the first one is the applicant is Allison Zeno, a plan of land to adjust the property line between lot 130 and 131 on Valley Road. Melinda. Madam <laughs> Chair, if I may. Uh, in your packets, you have an email from uh, Mr. Mark Morcelli indicating the reason uh, for this uh, plan coming back before you. I'll yes. simply summarize it for the record. Essentially, this plan was endorsed by the planning board, previous planning board, back in 2016. Unfortunately, the um, mylar was never uh, recorded as the registry of deeds, and because so much time has passed, um, we just encourage them to come back, seek uh, another endorsement so that they can finish the process. The plan that uh, you see up on the screen and which is included in your packet has not changed at all from that 2016 plan. It is the exact same item and it's essentially just asking for your re-endorsement of that same plan. And this was approved on September 27th, 2016. So if we could hear a motion. Okay. I move that the board induce the plan as it's presented without regard to buildability or compliance with zoning. Endorse the plan. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well done. Next, the applicant is Cameron B. Smith. A plan of land to divide lot B into lot B1 and B2, located at 433 Davisville Road. Um, going to turn up on the screen. Mr. Nicholson, are you speaking for this? Oh, you're leaving. <laughs> <coughs> Good evening. My name is Matthew Smith. Um, I'm Cameron Smith's father. Uh, on the application, I did. Cameron did sign as the owner, and I was as the applicant, Matthew B. Smith. So I apologize for the confusion. The plan of land does reference Cameron B. Smith because he is the owner. And I'll just point. Basically, lot B currently is square feet of area. And it has over almost 600 feet of frontage on Cumberland Lane. Current zoning requirements are 100 feet of frontage and 40,000 square feet of area. Um, we've had conservation commission out multiple times and had an RDA issue in August to delineate the wetlands. And why that's important is zoning requires 40,000 square feet of upland. So this is an ANR plan to create lot B1 and B2. This is the new lot line. Lot B2 has 50,000 square feet of up, 50,500 square feet of upland, 
and 198 feet of frontage, so it's a conforming for frontage and area only. Um, and then lot B1 has 343 and 70 feet of frontage and 40,500 feet of area. And Commodore Lane is a previously approved subdivision way, um, and this planning board's endorsed two other A and R plans. So it has both access and frontage and size. Yes, yes. We so there's a previous um, contour map. That's right. Yeah, basically uh -huh. the land's all flat, but suitability of access is important. <laughs> and it, it's easy access <coughs> any part of the frontage onto the lot. Is there any discussion from the board? Yeah, I have a question. Paul. When I first looked at this, I was a little confused because it says located at 433 Davisville Road. I don't yes. see Davisville Road on that map. No, the, ta the map block hasn't been updated by the assessor yet. So in the digital system, the only map block I can pick is 40-11-24. So that's why, and on the application, it's Davisville slash lot B Commodore, because it, it it's just your computer system's lagging the registry of deeds. I was confused when I first saw it. I was confused when I first yeah, saw no, it. Yeah, no, no, I apologize for the confusion, but that's Thank the you. reason. I have no objection to it. Any other comments? Could we have a motion? I move that the board endorse the plan as presented without regard to buildability or compliance with zoning. Second. It's been seconded. Uh -huh. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous? Thank you. You're all set. <coughs> Moving on, uh, we have a decision here um, for a matter that we discussed at our November 28th meeting, and um, the hearing was already closed. Are there any? Is there anything further that the board wishes to say? Oh. Because I wasn't here. Oh. Okay. Oh, you're reducing yourself. Yes. Oh, the subdivision. Okay, because she didn't hear the conversation. Correct. All right. If there is nothing anyone wishes to add to what we already know, um, Bob, could uh, you read the motion? Could uh, Paul read it? Because that's kind of a frog in my throat. Yeah, you sort of so. do. Okay. Um, who else would like to read? Paul? You want to read? Uh, Jim? <coughs> it's not your own. I don't have it handy. Oh. Okay, I'll read it. <coughs> if that's on the order. I'm just looking for it. Oh. I don't want to stop okay. coughing in the middle. Oh. I make a motion to approve the application for a preliminary subdivision plan of Steve Marsh under Article 3, Preliminary Plan, Chapter 305, Subdivision Regulations of the Town of Falmouth for a plan <coughs> entitled Preliminary Subdivision Plan, Catawba Lane Extension, Falmouth, Mass., prepared by Markey and Rubin Civil Engineering, dated August 10th, 2023, scale one inch to 40 feet, with the following findings and recommendations. The applicant is applying, to, and I'm not gonna read all the findings, but to the really the standouts. The applicant is applying to the planning board for a preliminary subdivision in accordance with Article 3 of Chapter 305 subdivision regulations to develop three lots off Catawba Lane. Catawba Lane is a paved private roadway originally approved as part of the Pine Meadows Definitive Subdivision Plan, approved by the Planning Board in 1988. Recommendations. Um, we are recommending uh, a few things, particularly a list of waivers from the Planning Board rules and regulations governing the subdivision of land must be included as part of the definitive plan application. The definitive plan submission will need drainage calculations for any roadway improvements, and all drainage designs will be subject to review by the Falmouth Engineering Division. And our final one that will be read aloud, the applicant should work with the abutters to resolve legal access rights over Catawba Lane prior to the filing of a definitive plan. And I would like the whole of the complete um, motion as part of the, uh, the minutes of the meeting. Second. There's a second. Is there any comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 Recused. And one recused. So six four, one recusal. Okay. Next. Um, we've come to a discussion item. And I think there's going to be a presentation here as part of this. This is about a senior care retirement district, which has been on the books as a possibility <coughs> for years. And now we have a taker. 
um, presented by Ray Mitrano. <clears throat> Good evening, Madam Chair, um, Board. Uh, my name is Ray Mitrano. I'm um, here representing the Ballymead Landing LLC team. Um, here are two of my partners, Patrick Callahan and Tim Callahan, <laughs> as well as our attorney, Rob Brennan, and our civil engineer, Russ Burke. Um, just to give a little history on the you know, how we got here today, we um, just back it up a little bit. Um, we started this process um, to address a, a need we thought for this parcel to be an assisted living facility with senior independent housing. As we started to dig into the process a little bit, we realized there was a tremendous opportunity to introduce an affordable housing component. So as we, as the, as the team grew, we basically we, we, we partnered, we brought in Northbridge. Communities who is a, a market rate affordable house, I mean, a, a senior housing developer and the planning officer of urban affairs. Uh, two clients that we had worked with over the years on other projects outside of Falmouth. So we thought this was a great opportunity to synergize a senior housing opportunity with an affordable senior housing opportunity. And that was sort of the genesis of the original proposal that we started. As we progressed, uh, we got into discussions with the town and project matured into two avenues and tonight we're going to present two options to you one is a straight up senior affordable with a senior independent component and the other is senior affordable with senior independent plus a workforce housing piece and we're going to walk that through walk that out walk out a couple of conceptual options as well as take you through what zoning amendments will be required in town meeting to be reviewed approved and put forth so that's, that is the discussion item, and, I think, and we hope at the end of this discussion we, we can get some, some consensus on some direction on this, because our intent is to go to a meeting in April on one of the options. So just a little background on the team, uh, the Planning Officer of Urban Affairs. Uh, this is in your packets as well. They're a uh, nonprofit affordable housing developer. They do affordable housing across the Commonwealth. Uh, they've done, we've done over a dozen projects with them. Um, they're, not, they're the affiliation of the Archdiocese. They're mission-based affordable housing. We've recently completed two 40B, friendly 40B of senior affordable projects with them. And we thought this was a great opportunity in Falmouth to do another one of a sim similar program. Northbridge Communities is a, um, is a senior housing developer, owner, operator. Um, they've got over 19 senior living communities in the New England area. They own and operate Lauren Tad, which is a Mashpee, and they, and another close one is, um, is Pine Hills. They have a property of assisted, assisted living facility in Pine Hills. So that's, that is basically our team. So we basically formed a joint venture between the owner and master developer, which is the Bally Mead Landing LLC group, the planning officer of urban affairs, and Northbridge, and the, the, with the intent to co-develop the site, and we'll show you some options for that. The site, if you know it, is basically 31 acres of wooded land uh, off of 151. It's basically the last out parcel left over from Ballymead, the, the master development. Uh, and this is uh, a site that's heavily wooded, uh, traversed by bike trails and uh, electrical easements. It's um, uh, basically abuts the backside of the Cape Club. So option one, um, basically consists of the senior affordable housing component, which is 70 units of rental senior housing. Uh, the intent, those would be flats with um, internal amenities specific <coughs> to that building. The independent um, senior piece is a market rate rental independent senior housing, which again, um, we were calling it, it's 55 plus, 146 units, we're mixing this this program, this particular program with, uh, with rental cottages in addition to the flats building. And there will be a, there'll be a 15% affordability component here. Just to note, the senior affordable is 100% affordable and this is a you know, market with a 15% affordable component. This is an initial concept plan, very conceptual, but um, based on some true, you know, tr you know, true dimensional requirements, uh, we've tried to meet all the dimensional requirements in the current zoning bylaw, minimizing the building heights to three stories. So each of the flats building, which uh, flat, you know, building A is the independent facility. Uh, buildings B are the cottages. 
and building C in this scheme is the um, senior affordable building, and that's a, that's a rental apartment building. All, all the, the entire property is accessed off of 151. Uh, we're showing uh, Old County Road here, which is an existing road that needs to be disposed of at some point, but access will be sort of off of Old County or in this, in just, in this vicinity um, into the parcel. This is the existing electrical easement that traverses the site. And these are some remnant parcels that are part of the, part of the zoning cleanup we'll need to do. That's option one. Option two is very similar to option one. Uh, basically the same components with senior affordable, independent senior living. Um, we're, adding a, we're adding a workforce component. We've had discussions with Jed and others in town about the possibility of workforce. It actually fits into the planning office's funding uh, profile. They've done other workforce projects in conjunction with affordable housing. So we thought this was an even better opportunity to mix a workforce component in. Now it adds a certain level of complication to what we're going to talk about tonight, but we thought you know, <coughs> it, is, it is an opportunity, and it is an opportunity that probably wouldn't come about uh, without the synergies between the market rate port portion of the, of the project and the uh, senior affordable piece. This is the concept plan, which basically is very similar. You have a flat style independent building, which is building A, um, rental cottages, independent cottages. There's a reduction in cottages here because we're trying to stay under the 248 unit maximum. So there are actually, you know, there's, there's only 20 cottages in this scheme. Um, we've maintained the 70 unit senior affordable building. So you added a 40 unit um, workforce housing building, which is building D. So the way the site sort of sets up is you know, <coughs> the market rate independent piece here and then the affordable components here. And just from a topography and a site perspective, there is, we're trying to work with the sort of existing topography where this portion of the property is sort of the flattest portion. And this is sort of a plateau here as well. So I'm going to turn this over to Rob Brennan to walk us through the mix and the affordability and sort of the amendments required or the modifications of the text amendment and the map amendments uh, in the zoning bylaw. Great. Thanks, Rick. Madam Chair, uh, for the record, my name is Robert Brennan, attorney with Small Act and Vaughn out of, uh, out of Hyannis. Uh, and it's been our job as the lawyers to, to paper this. So um, what I'm going to do is um, step you through kind of the two approaches, right? What, what uh, Ray's been talking about is option one, which is, um, would be amendments just to the existing uh, SCRD, uh, and then option two, uh, addressing the workforce component, which we were here, you know, during the discussion of the housing production plan, I know is one of the topics um, that was discussed there. Uh, this option, as, as Ray alluded to, was, was added because of and in response to, you know, comments and, and the expressed desire, you know, to look at uh, if there was a possibility of, of also doing workforce housing uh, as part of that. So um, what you see here is, uh, is the breakdown uh, of the unit mixes under, you know, under option one and option two. Um, option one would be uh, complying with the, uh, with the affordability requirement at 15%, uh, except with regard to the senior affordable. And this is because of the Planning Office of Urban Affairs. Um, they are uh, mission driven, uh, and all of that senior affordable would be done at 100% of, um, you know, 100 of that would be uh, capital A affordable, right? So, um, Obviously, in both scenarios, that would be that would be true, uh, both under option one and option two. Um, at the end of the day, you know, I've done some additional math here that's not reflected on the screen. Uh, but when we talk about option two and the workforce option, um, and one thing to keep in mind um, for the state subsidized housing inventory. Uh, the state is going to look at each of these, you know, as a separate uh, development for, for calculating, you know, what's going to be counted. Right? So obviously, you know, with affordable senior housing, those 70 units, because they're going to be 100%, you know, capital A affordable, 
all of that gets counted uh, towards the, the SHI. Um, with regard to the independent senior cottages, uh, again, complying with the, uh, with the existing requirement that gets the density bonus uh, at 15% on the existing uh, SCRD, 15% under each of those scenarios, uh, both for independent senior cottages and independent senior housing, 15% of those actual unit counts would also get counted towards the SHI. Um, we discussed, you know, with Jed, um, looking at option two, um, and option two, you know, what is reflected up here at the 140% of workforce, of, of AMI for workforce, reflects one of the comments or observations that was made, you know, with regard to AMI in towns, you know, throughout the Cape, when you have very wealthy individuals, AMI gets artificially inflated. And so being able to capture uh, workforce housing for those police, res first responders, hospital workers, teachers, they often get excluded if you're only looking at 80% of AMI. So by taking AMI up higher to levels like 140, and we were told you know, that in town there was precedent uh, for workforce at 140, you're actually accounting for the fact that AMI in Falmouth is artificially inflated because of wealthy, you know, residents, and you're now capturing. So that was the reason uh, that, you know, we put in the proposal, and you'll see in the text as well, proposing that for a workforce component within the SCRD, putting that at 140% of AMI, and then if at least 25% of that affordable, so 25% of those were at or below 80% and the rest above, all of that would be captured for the, um, for the SHI because it's a rental project, it's a rental segment, and at least 25% of the units are capital A affordable. So just, again, that observation was made looking at the housing production plan. So <clears throat> under option two, you know, if it was, if the workforce housing was at, <clears throat> Uh, at least 20% at 80 below, and the rest, the balance uh, up to 140%, you would end up with 130 of the 248 units uh, counting towards the SHI, um, and that would be, you know, 52% you know, percent of the total units would be counted toward the SHI. Under option one, you would end up counting 95 units, um, or roughly 38%. Again, option one is just staying with the uh, SCRD uh, as it stands now. So just wanted to, again, step you through kind of that breakdown and show you, um, you know, how it could play out under a workforce scenario, getting more units counted towards the, um, towards the uh, SHI. The current zoning for the site, and the site is uh, what you see um, uh, highlighted in red. Uh, current zoning, uh, a portion of it is zoned for the SCRD, uh, and the rest is agricultural AA. And <clears throat> under option one, what would be presented uh, would be just a map amendment that we would be look to go to town meeting, uh, we hope would be sponsored uh, by the planning board, and it would just be extending the SCRD uh, across the entire site to allow for development of option one uh, across the entire site. Option two would be also, you know, extending uh, a map amendment, extending the SCRD, but option two, remember, would be the introduction uh, of workforce housing. So it would create two sub-districts uh, within the SCRD. One sub-district, uh, the workforce housing sub-district, and you see that kind of on the left-hand side, WHS and the other one, uh, senior care uh, residential, um, excuse me, senior care retirement subdistrict, and that's the SCRS. So with regard to the two MAP amendments, uh, option one and what's up here now as, as option two. Again, comparison of the two, one would just be expanding SCRD without creating subdistricts across the 31 acres. Uh, the second would be extending the SCRD 
with the addition uh, of the two subdistricts uh, across the 31 acres. Um, the text amendments, um, and again, these we've been you know going back and forth with um, uh, with Jed and uh, and Brian Tobin. Um, the text amendments I, I would break down into kind of two categories. A uh, one is just housekeeping with regard to the SCRD. I say housekeeping. Um, currently, the way it's written is uh, SCRD is at least 62, right? So it's 62 plus, but it allows for a spouse to not be age qualifying. So a spouse who perhaps is, is 60. Um, it also allows for a surviving spouse to remain uh, who is not age qualifying, is not above that 62 threshold. The issue with this, and this is a common issue, um, you know, across, you know, towns that, that, that adopted uh, senior housing bylaws is that the federal fair housing statute and the state corollary to that um, prohibit uh, housing discrimination or zoning based on, on age, right? But there's an exception to that, and the exception is um, the Federal Housing for Older Persons Act that was adopted in 1988. And it said you can create senior districts. Um, and there's two categories. One is the 62 plus, and the second is 55 plus. The difference between the two for compliance with federal fair housing is if you are doing a 62 plus district, all the residents have to be 62 or older. If you're doing a 55 plus, at least one resident has to be 55 plus. Spouses or children can be non-age qualifying, can be below that 55 age threshold. But the way that the SCRD is written now, it has 62 plus, but pairs with it the spousal and exemptions, um, which are which are not allowed under federal or state fair housing unless you're talking in terms of a 55 plus. So the first bit of housekeeping, you know, that we prepared in the draft was, you know, believing that the intention, you know, probably was to, because it was expressed in the bylaw, to allow non-age qualifying spouses. So we adjusted the 62, you know, down to 55. You could address it the other way and say, gonna be 62, but then you'd have to strike the provisions that allowed either non, you know, um, non-age qualifying spouses or, you know, situation where grandparents, you know, may be raising a grandchild. Uh, that would also be, you know, prohibited. So again, we took the approach, believing that the intention probably was to be more forgiving and just, you know, drop that down to 55 to, to, call, uh, to conform with federal and state fair housing. Um, so that is, uh, is the primary driver, uh, the amendment in, in option one. However, we also put in provisions, you know, allowing for detached accessory structures uh, for wastewater treatment uh, and, and other structures. That currently was not in there. This would be uh, a property that, you know, would be served by a package plant. So that accessory structure, you know, for wastewater uh, was in there as well. Um, we also added uh, a child care facility use. That has been something uh, that Northbridge and others, and, and I know this has come up in other towns and perhaps here as well, particularly in connection you know, with senior housing where there's gonna be some supportive care provided. One of the greater challenges that we're facing here on the Cape is you know, in child care. So those service providers you know, said, we will have an easier time hiring staff you know, for you know, supportive care for residents if that's the staff can have you know, child care you know, located on site. So that was put into the, the draft as well. Uh, and then also a draft uh, addressed you know, the corresponding you know, parking requirements you know, for non-residential uses. So that's the summary of kind of the cleanup uh, for primarily for compliance with federal and state fair housing under option one. Um, that you know we hope would be considered uh, for um, for you know endorsement and sponsorship at town meeting. Now option two, you know, is that little more complicated one. It involves a little bit more redlining uh, and insertion of text because within the SCRD we're putting in an allowance <laughs> for a workforce housing subdistrict. 
So effectively, it would include everything that was in option one and then allowing workforce housing, you know, by special permit in that separate subdistrict. Again, you saw that, you know, as kind of uh, cordoned off, you know, within the site. Um, there would obviously not be an age restriction on the workforce housing. And then the definition of workforce housing uh, we put in at, a, at, um, at 140, you know, percent of AMI. Uh, and then with a density of eight units per acre, which is that bonus density uh, currently existing within the SCRD. Um, so that is, you know, kind of the step through the maps, you know, the different map amendments for option one, different map amendments for option two, and then the cleanup of the SCRD with regard to federal fair housing for option one, cleanup plus the addition of the workforce housing uh, allowance uh, for option two. So I'll leave it there. Um, you know, from here, we understand that we're up against a timeline, you know, for, for Springtown meeting. Um, so obviously, you know, the, with the warrant, you know, closing uh, when it does on January uh, 12th, our hope today, you know, was to field questions and get a sense as to where, you know, the planning board uh, would be most comfortable going forward, you know, with a sponsorship. Um, it's our hope, again, you know, that either on option one or on option two, we could get a, uh, a sponsorship from the planning board, you know, for Springtown meeting. Um, but again, you know, as, as, as Ray indicated, as, as I hope you got from, from my presentation, this is very much, you know, tried to be responsive, you know, to the conversations that are taking place, not just, you know, before this, uh, this hearing, which, you know, we, um, again, we're, it, we're excited to, to hear, um, but the, the goal was that we wanted to put forward options under the SCRD and, pr and a real project uh, that could proceed, you know, down one uh, or the other of these paths. Sir, before we, we go any further, do you have and have you figured out for the amount of acreage that you've got there if it's rezoned as you've requested for option two? What's the ultimate density that you could have there? on all that land? So on both of these, the unit count is 248 units per acre. Uh, at, at, well, I'm sorry, 248 units on the site at eight units per acre. That's what you're planning now, but it leaves a lot of land there not that you're not planning to build on right now. Were you to build out all of that land with the change in zoning, how many units would it be? Same, same. same. 248. So this, this would max it out? Yeah. And, and again, that's, that's conforming with all of the open space requirements, you know, under the SCRD, um, you know, which, which are, you know, which are prescribed, you know, in the zoning, the preservation, you know, of open space. So that 248, um, you know, as you heard, is, is under either scenario would be the, would be the development. Okay. Other questions? Uh, yeah, just a little clarification. Um, what you're calling independent senior living? but it has amenities and services, so is that assisted living? Um, it's not assisted, it's, it's, it's limited service, limited service basically. It's more apartments for seniors. Okay. But there'll be a fitness room, there'll be you know, cafes, a dining room, there'll be, you know, there'll be on-site amenities. Okay. So it isn't like people going around uh, it, uh, providing meals in people's no, homes? No, no, or, no, no, there'll be, you know, uh, be, there'll be kitchen, kitchens in the units, it'll be basically like services. apartments. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other questions, comments? Um, that, oh. I like option number two. Hmm? I like option number two. Mm -hmm. Jim? Yeah, um, as I recall when we zoned <laughs> this, because it was had more of a medical application and it was way out in the woods, we agreed to a 40% building height. <clears throat> Are you talking about expanding in that small area, taking the, the 40 feet, I mean, not 40 percent, over the whole site? Intend to expand that entire zone through the whole site. And use the 40 feet. You said three stories. Like two and a half stories. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Is it two and a half stories? Two and a half stories. You meant two and a half. Okay, you're not going 40 yeah, feet we're with not the flat roof. The okay, that's the. I got it. I was hoping that's what you're doing. That's fine. So it's two and a half stories. It might be, it's 35 feet high? 42 or four, or just four? 42 is the bylaw. Okay, Wait, but, it, but, but this is the only part of town that has that 42. But that's what 
that's not what's being proposed. I thought the city was going to do 42 feet. No, I can't remember what page it's on. It's they're two and a half stories. What's the building height? It didn't For say clarity, it. the the bylaw does allow uh, the planning board by special permit to allow for a 40 yeah, foot. Yeah, but it's a special height. permit. So there's two stories. Does that the grade? There's like almost a half grade because of some of the grade change. So what's the ridge line? That's how I'm asking. It's two stories. So and the height of the ridge line. We haven't designed the buildings yet. So okay. So these are just really footprints based on some of the problems. All right. We're not we're not, we're not looking we're not, to change. We're not looking, we're not looking to change. change what's currently in there. With well, regard to height. All the dimensional requirements of the original bylaw. Well, I guess my question was is this has the highest zoning of any in part of town only because it was a medical facility? Two it, stories. You know, for the 42, the 40 feet high. Not, nowhere else in town do we do that. Well, it, it, it doesn't, then, it doesn't uh, currently two specify and a half stories medical. It's usually a 35 foot building. I was just. It's a tall, it's a tall two, two stories, basically. We well, may have elevators in there also. It's a very tall two, two story building. I'm just trying to get the height. Didn't get an answer. I still have it. They're not sure. They can't go to the 40 feet without a special permit. We'll wait and see how they come up with the plan. Yeah, we're not looking to change anything in there with regard to with regard to the. You've got three patches in yellow here. Those would not be your property. As I recall, when we looked at this before, they were independently owned, and I think one of them, they didn't know who the owner was. Yeah, it was two parcels, maybe we have a control of us. One is in Colgate in the 20s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Three parcels. Uh, one is owned by the town, and two are... I think that's the one I'm referring to that it was who knows. Right. Would you be looking to acquire that so it's all that would be the intent of we're working around them now in the plan so we don't build on them um, in, in, in years to come. Okay. And then they have been, yeah. Okay. And just a comment where John said he'd be for option two. That, when Jim was referring to it, was a medical facility. It was one of these that independent that went to help, that went to nursing at that point in time. And we were looking at workforce housing um, to be able to get workers there because, again, the housing was an issue. And I think I would very much support having workforce housing there. And I would... So my question with that is if you have workforce housing and you have daycare there, would the workers who don't necessarily work on the property be able to avail themselves of the child care? Absolutely. That's the intent. Okay. And the intent would be that the child care would be probably attached into the independent building. The Northbridge would be the primary spot. But they, 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 in both accounts, would like the workforce out mm -hmm. for their staff because they're having a hard time keeping staff on the case. Mm -hmm. The staff have children, like that opportunity to have and the, work, the workforce housing, if that, that is the option, uh, many of those occupants will have children and be working in child care would be very And that's why handy. I like option two because you're slaying two dragons here, if you will. Three dragons. dragons. Three, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we just start. <laughs> well. Yeah, I thought that was a very good presentation, very comprehensive, and I appreciate your development process. That was very, very good. Thank you. I had a couple of questions, though. Where is the access off 151? That's a difficult street, and it looks like there's an old county road. Probably looking more on the easterly side, of the furthest way, because there is some topography on the westerly side. Yeah, you don't show it on that drawing. Well, the intent was to utilize the Old County Road. We have to dispose of that Old County Road. So it came off 151 on Old County Road and then come into the property? Is that what the intent is? similar to the Valley Need entrance where there's a median separation. So you can turn right, turn left, basically. You know, over the years, we have several people come in proposing something here. One was a some kind of a, of a competitive swim club with all kinds of people coming in. This is a far better use of that land in my mind, so that's, that's good. The other question I had is, 
this POUA, do they have particular restrictions on how you develop this project? So the, the I, I don't know if you want to hop in. But I, I can speak to. I mean, we we just I, we just permitted a a, a very similar uh, senior affordable project for planning office urban affairs in um, in Wayland. And you know, as, as Ray uh, mentioned, they are a um, an affiliate of the Catholic Archdiocese of Boston. Right? So they are uh, very much mission driven. You know, on senior and affordable. And what they will, you know, avail themselves of uh, most likely here is, you know, um, is an affordable, you know, stack. I mean, they'll have deep affordability typically at 30% of AMI because that allows them to access low-income housing tax credits. Um, they'll take advantage of other, you know, state funding um, at, at 60 and 80% of AMI. And now, you know, one of the things, and, and the workforce component uh, would most likely, you know, be developed by them as well. Um, and they would be able to avail themselves uh, of new funding that was just, well, some that's existing and some that is proposed in the housing bond bill uh, to promote workforce housing up to 100 and, you know, 20 percent of AMI. We don't know, you know, ultimately where that funding, you know, is going to lie. The CAPE has had created in that housing bond bill a proposal for Barnstable County as a seasonal resort community. Um, and one of the other, you know, hats that I wear uh, as I chair the Government Affairs Committee for the Mass Home Builders, we have been working uh, with the state, particularly with regard to Barnesville County, to lobby for adjustments of AMI, you know, for funding as well, recognizing, you know, that, that observation that came up in the earlier meeting. So it may be possible workforce housing programs statewide could be adjusted upward uh, for the CAPE. So they may be able to, again, access funding up to 140 percent of AMI. But they're not going to have restrictions on the people who are in that facility, other than other than um, yeah, other uh, than income, <coughs> income. Yeah, no, no, you know, faith requirements or restrictions. No, not at all. Um, the other issue, obviously, is wastewater treatment, and you haven't touched on that. Uh, we're, we're well aware of the. Uh, the, the need to put a uh, wastewater treatment facility on the site, and we're also aware of the uh, new restrictions from DEP with respect to nitrogen loading. So uh, we are well aware of that, and we'll be doing diligent testing and design to make sure that we are in compliance uh, with the, the new standards for uh, nitrogen uh, levels in the wastewater. Just to add another tech, just to piggyback on that, we've met with the DPW in the water department, so there's no water in 151. So there is, there's a line on the other side of 28, you know, 28A, there's a line beyond the boundary entrance, about 5,000 feet that needs to be connected. So we, we offered um, the water department the opportunity to leverage the affordable housing to file for a mass works plant which would help us get water and help them connect those two points together. So MassWorks has a new program called Housing Works, which is basically infrastructure for affordable housing. And we think if we can synergize all this stuff and get the get on the town meeting, the grant goes in just after January, it gets uh, filed uh, right about the same time as town meeting in April to, to, to the MassWorks uh, grant group, and it gets awarded in, in the same year, I think in October the same year. So this would be a highly qualified project because of the affordability levels here on the Cape. It's uh, also a high priority that's identified in the town's uh, capital mm -hmm. and, uh, infrastructure improvement. Yeah. And it's, it's I imagine you're aware of the fact that the town is looking at removing discharge, surface discharge and considering an ocean outfall. And if you have on-site treatment, you're going to be discharging to the subsurface. Is that correct? That could be an issue. Could be. Pam? <clears throat> I think this is a great project. Um, I love the idea that you've incorporated the workforce housing because, <clears throat> as you heard before, it's something that we desperately need. <clears throat> and to accommodate your own workers um, just goes one step beyond. And having child care for those workers, I mean, you've obviously done <clears throat> pretty comprehensive look at the area, what it can accommodate, 
and what you can provide. And um, I think it could work. The other, my only issue is the water. I think we have a major problem and we can't just keep putting Band-Aids on it. <clears throat> so it will be interesting to see how you fix it. Forward is putting the, the requisite zoning amendments in easy. place, and, and the, the reason we're here is to um, first to present what our ideas are and what the zoning uh, fixes and uh, amendments are necessary to, to make this project move forward. And we're hopeful that the planning board feels the same way and would, would be willing to uh, work with us to, uh, to present this to town meeting in the spring. And, and, and again, wastewater, you know, being a criteria that's already, you know, in uh, the uh, in the zoning, all of that subject to to uh, project approval by by special permit. So, uh, as, as Russ said, fully, you know, this getting the zoning amendment is is but the first step, um, and that's what you know would uh, with that zoning on the books would allow you know the design team you know to take those steps forward. You know, with regard to architecture, with regard to wastewater. Again, all in, in anticipation of presenting uh, in the context of a special permit. But just to your point as well, one of the things that by, by combining senior uh, and workforce you know, and child care, um, these state programs, including the, the, the state administration of the federal uh, low-income housing tax credit, are competitive. Um, and we believe you know, that by addressing you know, the crises that we're facing here on the Cape on multiple fronts, will make the application you know, more competitive and this be a more viable project. And that, again, includes the, the seasonal resort community designation proposed in the housing bond bill that would give uh, projects like this you know, on the Cape uh, priority when competing against you know, similar projects in the Cambridges and the Brooklines and, you know, and Newtons of the world. Would any provision be made for making these things available for local Falmouth? Employees, people who work in Falmouth. Yeah, consistent with you know with the state you know state state requirements and but there are state provisions for uh, for local option um, and we would you know we would fully expect that that would be something uh, that this board would be looking for in the in the uh, context of the special permit. I think you've heard now that each member of the board is Bob. Didn't you say also in favor of the workforce housing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it would naturally be looking toward that, but it's a very complicated ask as far as town meeting is concerned so and with a short time period for uh, getting people's attention and explaining it to them what it would be I think workforce housing is a well-known issue so that that will carry it, it pretty far but I don't know that it would carry it far enough something you haven't addressed yet I did look up um, for each of the companies that's involved what do your buildings look like and some of them look expensive and they look wonderful and some of them look not like that and we would be concerned about the character of the buildings and as I look at um, your schematic here the uh, they appear to be somewhat barracks like they don't have much articulation they don't there's no detailing there's no telling really what appearance they would have along 151 that kind of is the entryway to North Falmouth um, what would they look like uh, so in terms of, obviously we have a market rate component, an independent senior housing community market rate. So I guess if you've been to Lawrence High down in Yaki, it's, it's a fairly well articulated Cape Cod style architecture vernacular. That is the, the intent and the architecture that sort of blend with the main building. We're trying to give this a f overall campus feel so you don't have the high-end building and the low-end building that's going to have an overall campus feel to it, but it's going to be that Cape Cod vernacular, I mean, the scale is pretty small. It's huge, like two stories, single story cottages. Um, we can certainly share images of other designs that we've done in uh, our project types. Well, there are a lot of them online, and I've looked at a lot of them, but because they had such wide variants, it's hard to tell where you would land, and some of them I really wouldn't want to see there. Well, to quote a former ZBA member, it's in Hatchville, nobody will see it. <laughs> wow, bad for him. <laughs> Jim. Yeah, um, so just so I get this clear, we're doing a zoning change here. This isn't a 40B. We're changing the zoning so it's going to be a by right development. By special by permit. Special by permit. special permit. A special permit development. Key phrase. Um, what about Cape Cod Commission? We have to go 
this this you have, would, you don't, the forty B gives them a waiver. You know you don't you don't get that. You, so right. you have to go. Yep. So this would be process. subject because it's above. It exceeds twenty nine units. And, and would then be. La lastly, you are asking us to sponsor this. What's the last project this board sponsored? Did we ever? I don't think we ever have. I never heard of that before. We're not asking to sponsor. I thought project. I heard you ask. No, not the project. Just just, just the, 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 the zoning, zoning change. It's just the zoning change. Well, okay. Not the project. Well, let me ask the question. What's the last zoning change for affordable housing project that we, this board did? Why was, is that important? It might be the first time. Well, we're, they're asking us to agree to it and we haven't said any designs of the buildings. It's kind of like a good faith, uh, leap of faith, ready for January no, no, no. 12th. I think they'll have to come back to us yeah. with yeah. the whole site plan before they can build anything. I, I just, I'm, I'm not familiar with the concept of us proposing a, a, a development, a private developer. It, it wouldn't be the development. Uh, this just, would, we just this say would, okay. Well, no, this we would, endorse no, it. this would strictly be um, just like any other zoning change, right? So, whether it, it so was be the same thing if we voted favorably at our meeting. That's all you're asking us to do. Correct. Yeah, so okay, I did. Right. We do that all the time. I wasn't the term. One of you used the term sponsor. And that's what I was trying to. I didn't grasp that term. Amendments can be right. ten registered voters. It can be the planning board. It can be the selectmen, okay. etc. Um, we are hopeful that the planning board. So this will be a planning board article at yes. town meeting. This Correct. Would be, uh, the petitioner would be the planning. Board. We would be the so we would. Okay. You would also have to make a recommendation of a, of this board as you would any other zoning petition. You would have to make a recommendation. Uh, for a town meeting to be able to vote on it. Yeah. My only concern with that is that it was opening the door to a much bigger development in that area that you have assured me that that's not true, that you're maxing it out already. Correct. Correct. I think we'll check up on that. We believe you, um, but we will verify so because that, very that very would be the concern. It's been verified. Yeah, it yeah. has. Yes. Okay, so that, yeah. that's true. Because- 31 times eight. Let, let me put it this way. Why would we not sponsor Workforce housing there. I don't have a problem. It's just the first time we've done. I hadn't heard a developer say it that way. And I, it's the terminology that's throwing you. Right. It's the same thing that we always do when we put a bylaw together and take it to town meeting. Right. Well, we that's probably all we're did. Doing right now. It's, it's the we probably did this original zoning. This is probably one of the ones we d changed. We probably did. Yes. Yeah. Weren't you on the? I program? was. That's what I'm yeah. trying to get. Yeah. But it was a long time ago. The zoning out there has been changed a number of times. So, uh, yeah. looking at it aside from the value of the project that's proposed, obviously a valuable project. This would be great if it went forward. The bad part about going to town meeting, as the sponsor of this, is once you take a look at what we're sponsoring with all that red lining, if it gets turned down, you know, oh, wow, we'd have to go back again and ask again, which would be all right, but we would have to look at that. We might fail. Yeah, but I don't know if we could do it because we haven't discussed this at this one, point. One, one thing to consider, yeah. if, if, if I may, is uh, we initially came forward to the town with a, just a senior only proposal. Option one. And then our, our discussion with uh, Jed and the assistant town manager and other, uh, the question of workforce housing came up. and. Uh, we wanted to respond and we started looking at it and as Ray pointed out, we just found all sorts of synergy and uh, good, good interrelationships in, uh, in moving forward with that. But the way that we're presenting this, um, as, as Ruff uh, pointed out, option one, everything that is needed for both options um, has to have what's option one zoning, that map change and that zoning amendment as a prerequisite for option two. Right. And one way to look at it is, uh, so there are two map amendments and there are two text amendments. So if we go with option one's map amendments and text amendments, that means the senior component has had a safe landing vis-a-vis -vis zoning. Then we go with option two, which has the more 
more uh, detailed and perhaps confusing elements to it, um, that would re require approval for the workforce housing. And I'm not sure of this, but Jed, uh, my belief is that we would be looking at a quantum of vote for all of these um, as it relates to housing in the new language in section three, a, a quorum of vote that would be a simple majority and not a two-thirds majority from town meeting, which provides a, a very good opportunity for the town if they're interested in getting work. I forgot about that. You're right. And, and getting workforce housing on, on the books and you know, from the previous discussion, that obviously is something that is of interest not only um, to Felmas, but I think it's uh, nationwide something that's a, a, a need that needs to be addressed. So we, we have kind of a fail safe if we don't get, we get option one done and we don't get option two. We still have the ability to move forward with the all senior component. So what, what Russ is describing would be two separate warrant articles. Um, right. that could be taken up in succession. But the threshold, and I should have mentioned this in my presentation, the threshold because of housing choice is a simple majority uh, on, on both of these. Um, and again, everything everything that's done in one has to be, w would, would be included in two. So, you know, having these as two separate warrant articles would just be proving the first and then just adding on, you know, and explaining that this now creates the workforce option um, in the SCRD. I have two more quick questions. Go ahead. Jed, how does this, what does this number do to our 10 percent? Depends on when it does it. Well, with 130 that units. That was my next question, when it's going to be done. Well, we didn't look at the timeline. 130 units gets you uh, approximately halfway to, to your 10 percent goal. But it also you would, are now. But it would also give us the two-year yes. thing because it beats the production plan. Uh, yeah. For one year. Well, so it might. So keep in mind our housing production plan expires very soon, so our new one has to come online, and that's a new number. That's so. what I'm trying to figure out. And then I the other question, when do you expect time. it to, the approval date? When is that? I'm looking when the, the units start counting. How fast could they get it approved? And when does that 130 units go into the mix? When it's approved? It would have to be applied under a local action unit, I believe. Because this would be a local action, and therefore it would be eligible to be added to the SHI once you approve the special permit and application gets filed with the state and they approve it. Which could be, what's the fastest that could happen? Oh, I don't know. Uh, go to Cape Cod Commission. It doesn't have to go to Cape Cod Commission. Oh, it does. It does a year. Obviously, so it's a year. All that. Okay, so we're a couple years away. I'm just trying to get well, to the top. plan is to file concurrent with the uh, Cape Cod Commission for the DRI at the same time we do the special permit. Because the, each, each issuing um, entity is very cognizant of what the other is doing. And our, our experience, um, we did a similar, uh, the Ray had mentioned, of, of, at um, National Commons, the uh, Loring Tide assisted living had to go and we did that parallel. We got the special permit from the uh, town of Mashpee as well as going to Cape Cod Commission for the DRI. It took about 10 months. Mm -hmm. oh, was... You know, something that hasn't been said and probably should be um, is, yeah, the workforce housing is obviously what has made it super attractive to this board, but we really need um, assisted living and, and continuing care communities here. There's a real shortage on the Upper Cape so it, it'll be welcome even if only that part were to happen. Which is how we started this process. So right. we, we, this is sort of a curated team trying to meet all these different needs to a certain degree. Um, you know, workforce housing is an added bonus because of the planning office having the opportunity to do that and done that before and it falls into that same funding cycle. So yeah. to, to your point, it's, it's a shame not to take the opportunity, but it does complicate things. Right. And, and it would pair that you know, that supported independent living with senior affordable. Um, and if you, you know, I'm sure you're all following the headlines. I mean, senior affordable is going to be the next, you know, great crush. Um, it's as more and more folks go on to uh, fixed incomes, housing opportunities are, you know, are, are shrinking, you know, particularly here uh, on the Cape. So pairing those two, you know, was, um, was a first great synergy. 
and adding on the layer of, of workforce housing, you know, it all works together. Um, and you know, as you commented, allow us to, you know, to slay multiple dragons. And to the right. point about town meeting, you think the story is pretty dynamic. We have to the point that you've got a lot of pressure points here that a lot of people pick up on. It, it, it tells a good story. It tells the right story. Yeah. Well, and a reasonably good place for it too. John, did you want to say something? I, I would like just just like to say that <clears throat> option number two um, is everything the town of Falmouth needs. Yeah. And it would be right in our housing production plan. And uh, I, I don't see why we could not support this. Does anyone disagree? I think the 140% AMI is a big selling point. Yeah. Too. Yeah. I do too. I mean, it, it touches everything mm -hmm. that, that we talked about earlier this evening. It does. Mm -hmm. Pam, did you want to say something? No, I'm just <clears throat> hoping that we can uh, move this forward because I think we're on a crunch yeah, time. Well, we're this town meeting. Jed. Right. Maybe we could have. Uh, Where the rubber okay. hits the road, if you will. That's right, right. Jed. <laughs> it's all on you. Yeah, well, not quite. <laughs> oh, oh, Paul. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, I think it'd be helpful if you. Uh, if you had the BSC group talk at least about what the wastewater treatment issues are going to be, and as well as the access to the site, it's not clear how you're going to get in. And as I mentioned, that's a dangerous area. Uh, but you don't have to answer now. But I'm just saying the other issue I think you need to do is we've never approved a project without the architect, in this case the uh, the architectural t team showing at least some elevations and what the building's going to look like. Well, we have no... We're not approving the we're project. Not, we're not approving the we're project. We're not approving the project. We're just setting up zoning so they could come with a project. Semantics. The irony of this project well, is we're asking your um, sponsorship, if not at least your support, of, of the zoning. But the zoning in place does not obligate you to approve what we bring forward. Right. Um, so the irony is we, we, we could get your support and sponsorship. Um, That's what and, we normally and, look at, and though. And come to something that you don't like, we get shot down. I mean, I mean we're... Yeah. We're, we're very good listeners, though. I, I hope We've that's done come that across. Before, and so, have listened to what we we'll said. Yes. I think it's a good concept. Like. I just think you need to flesh it out a little bit more. A, a, no, a, 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 absolutely. We will if they get the zoning changes. But, so let's move on. We've got to address those questions as far as town meeting members. And we're going to be working to put in place. So you're with BSC Group? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Who's I think the we're architect? Ready to move this along. Ah, that's good to hear. I live in North Falmouth, so I care too. But I, I think one thing that uh, I'd like to reinforce what Ray said, and we've worked with various levels of the team, but uh, Ray has curated uh, what I consider to be a dream team, not only here, but the, the architects and the uh, opponents. Good luck. This is good to know. Jed, I wonder if you could prepare for us a motion for our next meeting to uh, bring a warrant article forward to the next town meeting to make these zoning changes. Yeah, so what we would. would oh, okay. Well, it would do it in the two step process. So, what we were proposing to do is if the board is in favor of the workforce housing, which I'm hearing that they are, and that the board is in favor of sponsoring this article. We can have the advertisement for the public hearing to the paper by this week, actually tomorrow, so that you can start a public hearing sooner than you would normally do under a petitioner's article. That way there can be extensive conversation with the public about the language itself and the amendments that they're proposing. So with that, if if you're so inclined, you might direct the staff to do what I just mentioned. Anyone have a problem with that? Um, no. We'd like to do that. And I assume you would like these gentlemen here to answer the public's concerns. Ideally. To listen and to answer. <laughs> of course. Right. And just we'll spent an hour and a half before this meeting talking about moving projects along. <laughs> I, I think you were there. We were. <laughs> Music to our ears. <laughs> Thank you. It really is a very attractive project. It's a great opportunity to... Response. <laughs> From the point of view. 
We look forward to working with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you very, very much. much. Okay. okay. Somewhere in, I think I just tidied it up. I've got an agenda. Here's an agenda. Oh, thank you. Um, zoning changes and amendments for the town meeting. We've just added to that. Mm -hmm. Well, lucky for you, we've actually incorporated it already. Um. <laughs> oh, surprise. <laughs> right. <laughs> as, a, as a draft holder, a placeholder, if you will. So included in your packets um, is a somewhat thick um, <laughs> stapled copy of all of the draft articles that we were contemplating might come before the April town meeting. So I will walk through them uh, somewhat quickly. Uh, I realize the hour is getting late. But um, essentially there are one, two, three, four, five main sections um, of the bylaw that we would be looking at changing. In total, you have 10 separate articles. And I'll, I'm going to explain to you why. Um, and then I'd like to try to discuss are some of these items um, a bit too much for April, right? So the first three articles are related to the definitions. The proposal currently is to change the way the definitions are displayed in the zoning bylaw. Our consultants, although they did a tremendous job of organizing all of those items into categories, it's created a little bit of confusion. We've talked about this before. We were going to bring this um, forward in November, but we didn't have enough time. So the first three items includes deleting section-specific definitions from Article 3, which is your main definition section, moving those to the sections in which they belong and only apply to. So for example, the mixed residential and commercial overlay district has certain definitions. Those definitions be moved and put into that section, and they would only apply to that section. The second item is to organize and remove the, basically first, remove the categories, and those categories being, um, I can't remember exactly what they are, but they're general terms that grouped all of the definitions into, into categories. We would eliminate that format, and we would sort everything alphabetically like it was before. Then item number three is removing section 3.2, which is an index of those categories which you just removed. Okay, so that takes care of all the definitions. So in summary, what it does is reverts the definitions back to the way you would normally see them before recodification. All alphabetized, and the ones that only apply to specific sections are moved to those specific sections. Any it's questions? Still an index. We will work on an index down the road, but yes. We will accomplish that, but we just did haven't incorporated it here because, again, we've got a lot to deal with. The second, well, I should say the, this would be Article Number Four, relates to the Senior Care Retirement District. What you just talked, what you just heard about. So the first item would be the map amendment. Article Number Five is the text amendments that um, you know we just heard about, uh, including the workforce housing. Article number six is the conversion of a dwelling. Remember, we talked about that, uh, I think it was over the summer and late fall, about changes that you want to make to the conversion of a dwelling use within the three um, use tables that currently exist. It's in the business district, the public use district, and the single residence district. So we'd be um, changing the date for which uh, the structure would apply to. What's the date? that language consistent. I believe that we landed on the la within the last 10 years or, or something to that effect. I can't remember okay. the exact phrase. That's the article number five, I believe. The, the, well, I'm sorry, the other two you were changing, you said you're changing three things? Uh, for conversion? Yeah. It would be in the three zoning districts in which it's allowed. Could we go back to the part about the conversion and the date? Yeah. And the date, the dwelling uh, among the standards, it's saying the date would be January 1st, 1980. I thought we moved it up much further than that. We did. This is just the Let's current see. language as it as it is. I just haven't finished these, this is the existing oh. these articles yet. Oh, okay. So come this is, these you. are placeholders. We're yeah. not. Yeah, we're not. We're not okay, advertising for these. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. All we're trying to do is just get a discussion about town meeting and how many, how okay. much. Okay. 
how much to hit them with, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so article number seven is uh, mixed residential and commercial overlay district. The idea would be to fix some of the language like the board wanted to, yeah. to make sure it's clear that the board is a special permit granting authority and, and you have all the purview over it. Article eight would be, um, again, mixed use, um, mixed residential and commercial overlay district related to the mixed use development. So we would be editing the definition of a mixed use development. And then Article 9 is home occupation. So the working group has been working on home occupation and edits to that bylaw for quite some time. It's been delayed a couple of times simply because of other things that have taken precedent um, for town meeting. Um, so that is something that is ready to go um, or just about ready to go. And we were hoping to bring that forward for April as well. So changes to that bylaw itself. They're, they're reflected here. This is the actual draft language. What's we'll the major change you're doing? What, what was the problem you're fixing? So the, there's, two, there's one main reason. Currently, the bylaw doesn't make it clear um, about by right home occupations and special permit occupations. They call the special permit a home-based service business. It's a little convoluted. So what we tried to do is simplify the language and say, if you meet this category, you're a by right home occupation. If you meet these categories, you're a special permit. Just sort of simplify the language, keep a lot of it intact, but just make it more clear and easy to understand. So where do I see the buy rights? So it would be everything in that packet under 249.5B. So all of those items are things that would trigger or not allow a buy right home occupation. So for example, negative impacts to the neighborhood. If a buy right home occupation had those types of things, they wouldn't um, be allowed to do so or they would have to seek a special permit because they have impacts to the neighborhood related to traffic and parking and noise, et cetera. The idea with a home occupation that is by right is, is essentially you don't even know that it's there. So it could be an at-home attorney, a tax uh, accountant, what have you, something that's got very little impact. The special permit home occupations are those that obviously have a little bit more. You have visitors coming, you may be selling items, you may be repairing things, et cetera, et cetera. I don't mean to open a Pandora's box, but short-term rentals are home-based occupations. Which we will get If you to live in the house. Yes, if you are the owner and living there. That would fall under a different bylaw. If you, it's a rooming house if you live in the house, and these short-term rentals are not people living in the house that they're specifically not living there. The Airbnbs? Uh, most of the Airbnbs in town, many of the Airbnbs in town, the owner is right there. I know some of them. Well, they have rooms, but no, I thought the... Okay, I didn't want to hold this up on it. You know, I tell us who it is. Hmm? <laughs> no, I tell us who it is. No, I'm not telling. Okay. They have to register with the state. They're all registered with the state. They just don't have to register. Feels locally. a little bit like you're jumping agenda. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Last article is changing the definition to to the home occupation because currently, right now, there are two definitions in the bylaw. There's the home based business or home occupation uh, definition as well as home based service business. So we would be proposing to change that to just a home based business. Now, having said that, that's ten articles. That's a lot. I have a question, but. Do each of those require a separate article at town meeting, or could yeah. you lump them together as a series of articles in one? Um, well, I don't know as of yet. Um, I, the next step is to go and meet with town council and just sort of outline these things. Maybe we have the opportunity to combine some of them, but um, the think thinking so. right now is that they're separate. I think they're always separate mm -hmm. for you. And the definition oh, ones the definition. are particularly challenging, the home occupation and the mix res, um, the mixed use development in Mr. Cod, because we have to make sure that the timing works for if you've approved the definitions in the first three articles, you want to make sure that they're separate because yeah. you know, now you're going back and you're changing something you just changed. So, But they're all in the same category. They're all 240. Yes. 
All of them are. Yep. Well, all of ours are. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It'd be nice if you could combine them, make it a lot simpler for the town meeting members to understand them. Well, they're always all 240, all our changes. I agree. I think there could be opportunity to combine, perhaps. But there also may be opportunity to just take out some stuff, although home occupation has been waiting around for a while to come forward. They're easier to talk about separately. Yeah. Okay. Much easier. Yep. And then if one fails, it doesn't drag down the others. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So definitions, I think, is an important uh, keep for April town meeting. Uh, we've, we've heard a lot of um, issues with definitions, so we really would like to keep that. Clearly, the Senior Care Retirement District is an important one to keep as well. Um, so at that point, it's my recommendation is we don't do too much. Um, that would be five articles, five separate articles. So y you might be able to lump on the conversion of a dwelling, uh, but maybe that means that Mr. Cog waits until November. Maybe home occupation waits till November. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is the reason I'm trying to talk to you guys about what are your priorities? Oh, no. I certainly don't want to hold up Mr. Codd for anything. That's my vote. Mm. I, I'd just as soon do them. Just, you know, it's our town meeting, too. We'll take up their time to get this done. Yeah, if, we, if we could uh, bundle the definitions together, that might. Well, it's not really about bundling them together. It, it, it takes up the same amount of time to present them if you bundle them together or you don't bundle them together. I think the whole legal process of having them separate is so that it's streamlined so there's no mess between each yeah. what you're doing. So you're doing this process first and then this process. Um, so that's and I would think the definitions would go pretty quick. Yeah, they it's should. not that they would take long, they like the definitions. It's yeah. just the streamlining yeah. of, of what exactly you're doing for each process. Yeah. I would be surprised if it didn't go on the blanket. Well, and don't forget, I mean, someone has to present all this information. <laughs> Are you ready to present 10 articles? <laughs> if everybody helps me, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if the board is willing to do 10, we can certainly entertain 10. Um, yeah. But you know, it would be my recommendation we'd, we'd, we'd sort of trim that back a little bit. I hate to say it, but home occupation, I think, is the one that might fall off and wait till November. Um, my understanding is it's not sort of a, an emergency. Well, the thing is, I'm aware that there's more coming behind. Oh, there is. Right. So this is hardly the end. And what we're, it seems as if we're going to be doing it's true, we are not recodifying any longer. Now we're actually making changes. This is a different thing, but it's still a cleanup operation. Yep. It's like never ending. If we don't take big bites, it will take longer. You're absolutely right. I would like to go for all 10. And having said that, however, the home occupation was a real hot button issue. Really? If you, oh yeah, there are lots of arguments about that. And so if we were going to cut one of them off, that would be the one I would say we should cut off. Yeah, but to the changes we're making aren't the argumentative. Once well, you bring it up, you'd be surprised what people can argue about it. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I can see where. Uh, I agree, November sounds good. Yeah. yeah. I, so home occupation yeah. Is, is one of those that's it's right there uh, in terms of it's being ready. But I think the working group still has to do a little bit of work to just make sure, and Michaela's done a lot of this work already, to make sure that this new definition doesn't create any problems with the uh, um, bylaw itself. She's confident it doesn't, but the working group still needs to discuss it. Mm -hmm. Well, we're meeting tomorrow. We are. We are. Um, tomorrow we were going to try to dedicate to this senior care retirement district because it, it really is an important and um, not confusing, but thorough red line version, yeah, which... there's a lot in it. Yes, there is quite a bit to read about and understand and make sure... <coughs> <coughs> okay, so in the interest of time, you're saying drop home occupation now, and yeah. John wants to do that. Yeah, I, I can see where the special permit section of that would uh, mm -hmm. take a lot of time. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather see them dealing all of those because the big issues are coming next. When we start changing the bylaw, those are the ones that are going to be very critical and be very, very controversial. 
And if these are ready to go, I don't know why we can't deal with these. These are still cleanup operations. So I do them all right now and get it over with. And then you have to deal with the changes to the bylaw, which are going to take public hearings and everything else. And that's a much different process. So I think it makes sense to get this out of the way first, from my perspective. Okay. You have to advertise them out pretty soon, right? That's, that's really the key. We can't wait. No, it's time care. to call. The senior care retirement would ad be advertised Friday. <coughs> All of the other ones would be advertised next Friday. The ads have to be in Wednesday before the, the, ad, the Friday. So the senior care ad has to be in tomorrow. The, all the other ads have to be in next Wednesday. Paul, thank you. I agree with you very much. But I think we're going to have to go with dropping the home occupation one and doing the others just so that we have agreement on it. You just don't agree. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We just don't agree. Is that? So should we take a vote on it, or do we need to post uh, notices in the paper? Or? I think you say you agree, but you don't. <laughs> Tam, you haven't said anything on this one. I agree that we should drop the home occupation till the fall. <clears throat> so there. I thought you were my friend. <laughs> I thought I was too. Oh. You can make up later. Lunch, does it, Paul? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so our next discussion item is going to be short term rentals, potential strategies, but it might be late to be getting onto this. And I really, um, the part I, I hope happens is that Jed explains where the rest of the uh, town management is in dealing with this issue because our concern is that it has to be dealt with and we keep putting it off so where are we Jed? well i can say this so you know as i've mentioned before um, myself and associate town council brian tobin and town council Maura o'keefe we met with the select board i believe it was april 1st of last year perhaps this year all of it's sort of a, a a blur. Yeah, it's, it's difficult to recall, but it was some time ago, let's call it that, where we outlined um, essentially what short-term rentals might be considered within our zoning bylaw and also explained to the, to the select board, this was uh, one of their Saturday workshops, about what other communities have done to deal with short-term rentals and what potential strategies you might um, or they might consider moving forward. Now, is the policy, you know, making the board of the community, uh, it's my understanding that the select board needs to um, determine how they want to deal with short-term rentals, <laughs> understanding that Falmouth is a summer destination for a lot of folks. A lot of property owners currently rent their properties. So many of you probably have them in your neighborhood. Um, there's an interest to, you know, obviously respect the private property rights of, of individuals. Um, but there's also this growing um, movement, if you will, of private firms, companies, buying up property and um, basically creating Airbnbs or short-term rentals. And so it's not a private property owner, it's, it's a business. Um, and uh, it's apparently, you know, uh, throughout town. And so they have to decide how they want to handle those types of things. You know, currently, as we described to them, our zoning bylaw, the closest thing to um, allowing a short-term rental would be a commercial accommodation, which your folks are well aware that is a motel, hotel site type um, operation. Similar, but um, you know, that could create uh, quite a bit of special permits coming through for the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, there's also the idea of, you know, do we want to allow short-term rentals? Does the town want to allow them every, in every zoning district in town? Is there an indication that you know you may want to restrict them? So there's a lot of open questions about how to deal with short-term rentals and how communities have done it and perhaps succeeded or failed legally um, in um, sort of controlling that use. And so it's my understanding that the select board just needs to uh, make a decision on how they want to move forward with that. Um, to date, I don't believe that they've done that, and so it's you know something that they still need to take up. And once they do and give us sort of, or the community, a, a um, sort of direction to follow, then perhaps the planning board starts to get involved, perhaps, in um, making zoning amendments or, um, or creating regulations. 
we just don't know yet. Um, and so that's why, um, you know, it's, un you know, I just can't give you a, a solid answer other than that explanation as to where I understand we're at currently. So we just have to sort of wait until they make a decision uh, on what they want to do. And then, you know, when we're called up to the plate, we gotta, we got to make contact with the ball. How are they framing the question? Ooh, um, well, I think the first thing is identifying what a short-term rental is. You know, is it a commercial use? Is it, uh, is it, is it a you know, residence use of, you know, are they allowed to just um, receive a rental permit like they would if they rented a, an apartment for an entire year? Is that the easiest way to deal with them? Um, and then secondly is, you know, really is, are they, are they interested in restricting them uh, in certain parts of town? And can they? Uh, you know, I don't have the legal knowledge. That's where town council comes in and helps us out to say, can you restrict this type of use within certain zoning districts and have communities tried and failed? Uh, I just don't know that for certain. So. Jed, could this be considered as a subgroup under home-based business? That's a good question. I Say that again. Could this be considered a subgroup under home-based business? Because nobody's objecting here to having a, a rental for a period of time, and the owner is there. I'm fairly certain there's a re there's a there's a question about the owner of their part. Okay, a really big question. Most of the Airbnbs and, and summer rentals out of the owners are not. not there. They're not. I know. Okay. But can you consider it perhaps as a home-based business? Some of them, but Some not of, most of them. Yeah. Well, don't forget that home-based business is restricted to only thirty percent of the prior. Oh, that's right. No, it couldn't be. Yeah. No. I mean, unless you're just renting out. Yeah. A room or a rent station. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this could be disastrous. <clears throat> it's a serious topic, right? Because you know, Very. I think all everyone here probably knows someone who yeah. may rent out their property over the summertime. I think we all remember Doug Brown coming here yeah. and saying that you know the select person and saying that uh, he regarded it as a commercial use. It's a business use in a residential neighborhood, and he has one. And he has one, and he'd be willing to give it up because he wants to maintain the character mm -hmm. of the residential neighborhoods. Right. And I would think we would too. We would mm -hmm. agree with that. Yeah. But we know that many people are financing their lives in a way, mm -hmm. um, paying their mortgages in exactly this way, and it's been going on for a long time. Yeah. So it's going to take uh, research to find out exactly what is going on and looking at uh, the distinguishing among the different kinds of short-term rentals mm -hmm so that we don't harm people that we don't intend to, but we do not allow large commercial interests to come buy up neighborhoods and turn them into scattered hotels. Right. Right. And we'll have to figure out how to enforce it. Mm -hmm. That's the big yes, problem. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we got another question. It's very similar. Staff. So, no, selectmen were talking about uh, a bylaw change and I didn't hear you bring it up tonight about uh, you know taxing over a million dollars, a two percent tax over everything a million dollars. And they were talking about how they're bringing that forward for this town meeting. Is that still on? That's a transfer tax. Transfer tax. Right. Is it still? Is it one of the articles you're working on? That's not one of the articles I'm working on. Um, Are they working on it? It's a joint effort, but um, Kim Fish is is spearheading that effort. Joint effort with who? I'm, uh, well, town council's office. Okay, the town, so it's town review. council and selectmen. We're not having anything to do with it. We, yeah, the planning board is not involved. We don't do nope. taxes. Nope. I thought it was going to be a bylaw change. General bylaw. Jo oh, this is the yeah, not the 240 bylaws. bylaws. Correct. Right, not okay. us. No zoning. Okay, it's the 300. Uh, You're safe. You're safe. There are communities that have already done it. I got it. I'm sorry for the confusion. I got could, it could we just wrap up our short-term rental conversation, saying that it distresses me that nothing is being done. That, you know, it's over, oh, you can't do it, they're doing it, and it just wanders off into oblivion. That's why I'm wondering if the selectmen don't really have it on their plate anymore, or if they pushed it to the side of their plate, like right. peas that somehow roll off onto yeah. the floor, you know? They're so, very busy. Yeah. So, uh -huh. I mean, there's that. Um, 
we can certainly raise the uh, the issue again with uh, town management and see if if they intend to bring it up again. Mm -hmm. um, and I can coordinate with with Kim Fish, our housing coordinator, to see. Uh, could you, could you please because um, otherwise nothing much is going to happen. And I respect their time, yeah. but you know I look it's at their agendas time. and I see what they're busy with. Okay. Did staff prepare this? No. Who prepared this? I believe Charlotte put that together, or Charlotte grabbed it from. Uh, I think I something like this, it should be indicated who it comes from, and perhaps a date, because it doesn't get out of the, you know, you wonder who, who did this. I did that. I did that off the internet. So I didn't originate one single word. I just chose some things to print. AI, huh? So you need right. citations. It's even lower than AI. Not much no, but that, it should be a, It should be an attribution. And right, we call it. So, announcements. Anyone have announcements? Uh, just I one don't. more time, one more plug for the, affordable, for the housing production plan public meeting, January 10th. Oh. Okay. Have any questions, email uh, the housing, housing coordinator or um, the town planner. If you didn't go to the last one, I'd like to tell you they're really interesting. Mm -hmm. A, to see who turns up and, you know, hear what people have to say. Mm -hmm. They're good. The general correspondence. I get it. No, sir. Oh. It's a little late, but it's happy Hanukkah, but oh. Merry Christmas. We don't have a meeting until after the first of the year, yeah. so Merry so Christmas, everyone. Who are done? January 2nd is our next yeah, one. Yeah, for this yeah. year. There goes 2023. Yeah. Future agenda mm -hmm. items. Yeah. You're on your own on that. <laughs> and our next meeting is January 2nd. Okay. So. Move adjournment. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Done. Thank you.